Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to G2 Gaming with the Gandyman, and boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, do we have a good one today. We have some great For Honor news to talk about for you guys today. If you are in this week's Warrior's Den, then you know exactly what I'll be talking about. Season 2 is nearly upon us, with about a week and a half to go before the Faction War begins again. Earlier this week, I released an overview of the two new characters that they teased last week, and today we'll be going over them a little bit more as I will change and or reinforce some of my thoughts from my previous video. I am also going to go over a few other things that they mentioned this week in the Warriors Den, such as my opinions of the new maps, as well as take a look at some of the new changes the devs are making to the loot for the upcoming Faction War season. But first, just a quick reminder or announcement, if you didn't watch the Warriors Den, there are a few things they mentioned that I think might be of some interest to some of you guys. The first one that I will definitely be paying attention to is the live stream event that they're going to have Monday, May 15th. That is allegedly going to be very similar to the live stream show that they did uh, the day prior to the game's launch. Uh, with all the celebrities and YouTuber, YouTubers and streamers competing against each other. Uh, in the faction war to kick off the faction war so I'm looking forward to that uh, you guys might be as well uh, I know I enjoyed the stream that they had in February so I'll be looking forward to this they also announced this week's new content which is some new mythic outfits uh, for each character that also come with a new effect I'm not exactly sure what the effect is for the knights uh, though it is probably it looks kind of like fireflies it looks like a bug theme this time uh, it looks like fireflies for the knights some the, the Vikings have some sort of mosquito effect, some locust effect, uh, and the samurai have a butterfly effect. Butterfly effect. <laughs> you see what I did there? Anyway, so we're going to get started with the topics for today's video, shall we? I will start off slow for you guys, so you're not like getting all the headline news right away, because that's good video journalism right there, baiting you guys in, making you guys wait until later on in the video to hear about the good juicy stuff. So I'll start off slow and with a little bit of uh, technical things that we, get, that we get to talk about. Let's talk about the new approach that the dev team is taking to the gear stats and balancing. It sounds as if the For Honor team is really relying on this new season to bring back some of, it, some of the players that have kind of forsaken the game and maybe even entice new players to come into the game as well. Obviously, it's going to bring back some people. New characters are bound to do at least that, but whether they stick around is another story. Hopefully, this new stuff with the balancing will help with that. However, based on what I have seen on their rebalancing here, I think they might be making the appropriate steps to at least have better retention of new and returning players. That is, if it all works the way that they're planning on and hoping that it does work. So they are reworking the gear and stats for the new season, as you can see in the PowerPoint that I that was in the Warriors Den live stream, and that I will also be po posting and showing along with this video. First thing that they are trying to focus on is the balancing between beginners and veterans in the game, or lower level characters and high level characters. Some people who are highly experienced in the game might be trying a different character, for example the Centurion, some people, some seasoned veterans of For Honor might try out the new Centurion and Shinobi characters coming into the game, but if they do that, some might not be doing that, or, or can't do that because they don't have the steel or the season pass to do so, so they'll be fighting against higher level characters with their lower level uh, new characters for a while. And that is one of the things that the For Honor dev team is trying to combat. Uh, they're anticipating it and they're trying to come up with things that are not going to make that such a gap. Based on the stuff they showed, it appears as if the gray gear is going to have more upside to their stat rolls than the higher level rarity gear such as the new epic gear coming into the game as well. This bodes well for newer characters and players in the game and at least gives them a somewhat of a fighting chance in the team based gear enabled battles. In duels and brawls it won't make much of a difference obviously because gear isn't and gear isn't enabled in those modes. Another thing that they are doing is reworking the stats rolled on each equipment piece. They are removing a few stats and merging one as well as adding either an attack or bonus defense depending on your gear. It looks like every weapon modification adjusts your overall attack and every armor modification adjusts your overall defense. 
They're removing block damage resistance, feet cooldown reduction, throw distance, and sadly, sprint speed. They say they are removing these stats entirely because not many players seem to focus on these stats when rolling for gear. However, I did look for both sprint speed and even a little bit of throw distance to a point. Being in Orochi, I was more so focused on overall speed stats like th uh, instead of uh, throw distance. But on characters such as the Lawbringer, I did focus a little bit more on throw distance, as I'm sure many did. But regardless, I guess these are probably used less than most other stats. Meanwhile, Revenge Gained by Defense and Revenge Gained by Injury will be merged into one Revenge Gain stat. Another Revenge build was nerfed a while ago, but I still think that this, poten this could potentially balance it out a, li a little bit more. Another thing to note about this stat change is that the presentation and representation of how the stats are displayed to the character and to the player is going to change from that bar uh, thing that you got in the game currently to percentages and ratios and stuff like that. On top of this, it was also announced that the devs wanted to one of the community could to consider their builds a little bit more and therefore making the stat rolls slightly different. We all know that the gear rolls with two positive increases to stats and one negative. This largely is staying the same, but the negative stat roll will actually be larger than it has in the past. The devs are hoping that this will make players consider their builds a little bit more than they pre have previously done. Now, you can either stick with this type of stat roll or there is a, an opportunity and an option for you to go with a stat roll bundle that makes everything positive uh, but only for a moderate amount. You're not going to have f max gauges on certain uh, max stats on certain t skills and abilities. Uh, as a p uh, If you do it this way, you will have a moderate gain for each stat instead of two gains and one uh, negative kind of thing. So that's what this bundle is supposed to be. Another thing that will help players, especially newer ones, is that the gear levels you will get as you level up will improve sooner than it did in Season 1. Meaning, based on this chart that you, will, that you see here, you will get gray common gear for 0 rep until Reputation 2, but will stop getting them as frequently starting Reputation 3. Then you will start getting blue rare gear until Reputation 4, where you will start getting purple heroic gear more frequently at Reputation 5. Then you will start getting epic gear the most, most frequently at Reputation 7. You will also be getting a specific type of gear over a shorter period of time based on this chart as you can see. So earlier we've been getting rare gear from reputation 1 through about reputation 6 for a total of 6 reputations. Now you'll be getting rare gear from reputation 1 to reputation 4 for a span of 4 reputations. That looks like it'll be the norm from now on. I kind of like this change uh, and I hope you guys do too. If not, it kind of doesn't really matter at this point because the devs are going to do what the devs are going to do. With these gear stats and new epic gear being introduced to the game, it will also increase the max gear stat to what looks to be 144. The devs noted that you basically take 108, divide it by 3, and add that number that you should get from dividing 108 by 3 to 108, and that will be your next max gear score. So essentially, just add 36 to 108, and you get the new max gear score of 144. That's how it actually works, then that's your new max gear score. Well, that's about it for all the boring gear stuff. We all came to the Warriors Den this week for the new content updates, the maps, and the characters. Before getting into the characters, let's take a look at the new maps. I don't think we will truly know the difference in the layouts of these maps until we actually have the content available to us. But the two new maps we will have available to us will be the Forge and the Temple Garden. First, let me just say this. My favorite of the two maps is Temple Garden. I think that is the most unique map out of the two that they are introducing and arguably every map in the game, with maybe the exception of the village map. However, the Forge, as I said in the chat during the reveal, looks like a combination of a few maps in the game, uh, such as the village, the shard, and the shipyard. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't dislike it, but I just felt like there wasn't a significant difference between that map and the other maps that we have in the game. The maps, even though all of them are cool, I don't put as much interest in them as perhaps some people do. None of the maps are really jaw-dropping, uh, but the heroes, oh boy. Yeah, they are jaw-dropping. Some fight for warlords. They fought for an empire. Their might 
inspired generations of soldiers and struck fear in the heart of their enemies. They are Centurions. Their confidence radiates out to all those who follow them. With their gladius as an extension of their arm, and their fist as strong as their conviction. Once the pride of a glorious dynasty, their legend is soon to be rewritten. Theirs was a secret society. Even we samurai were not sure they actually existed, or if they were just a myth. Until they came out of the shadow, Shinobi. Their weapon, the Kusari Gamma, is like no other. It echoes through our past and proves that they are indeed from our blood. Trained in secret, their presence on the battlefield is felt before they can be seen. We now know they are always close, waiting for the right moment to strike. They have now entered this war and won't leave until their job is done. So, having saved the best for last, it is now time to talk about the heroes that they showed off that are slated for Season 2. So far, both look really cool. So if you've seen my previous video on the newly announced heroes, you know where I stand and for the most part where I still stand for this video for each particular hero. Both looked wicked awesome and one I think will be stronger than the other while the other will be possibly more fun and a little bit more difficult to play and overall weaker. The Centurion is going to be the strongest character and the Shinobi will be the most difficult and obviously weaker character. You know this if you've seen my last video, but I'll explain it a little bit more uh, whenever we cover the Shinobi. So when I talked about the customization options for the Centurion in the last video, I was pretty much accurate with what, I, what the expected customization options were going to be. But if you've played the game as much as I have, then it isn't hard to guess. But we got to look at the full Centurion's character trailer where we got to see a little bit more of the Centurion's moveset and can see that it does appear as if the Centurion will be using his opposite arm while fighting, more specifically for defensive purposes, as we do see him use it while he parries an attack in the game. This, I believe, also shows that the Centurion will more than likely have a constant guard stance, more like the Vanguard characters, even though it's a hybrid of both the Assassin class and Vanguard class. Also, it appears as if he may have a move set where he uses his other hand to attack as well. So you only get one instance in the trailer and that is when he's attacking a soldier in a contested area like uh, B or C if it's in the shard. It also appears that the Centurion may have a new type of attack with a reddish aura around one of his attacks and a heavy stabbing attack shown in both teaser trailers that we saw, or both the teaser that we saw last week and we see it twice in this trailer. I was searching through the For Honor competitive reddit and even stated that I believe that the attack could be some kind of guard breaking heavy attack because both instances where you see this attack led the centurion into what appears to be an execution other people claim it could be an unparryable attack which is conceivable but i do not believe that it is an unblockable attack since those types of attacks are not reddish looking in color other people say that it is a pinning attack that is similar in nature to the valkyrie shoulder pin attack without a bleed effect this pin attack may temporarily paralyze a character for a guaranteed follow-up attack. Either way, I believe it's a heavy attack since both times it initiates an execution in the video. It also appears as if the Centurion has a similar attack to the Peacekeeper's three-stab guard break, although it's like three punches and then a strike with the sword. Now, I don't think that it's going to have a bleed attack or a bleed effect along with that attack. Now with how much I think the Centurion is cool, I can't wait to play it. I am a little skeptical with how much I will like it because it does appear to have quite a few shorthanded looking attacks which I don't believe look all that great. And to be honest, the coolness and smoothness of attacks is a big factor on whether or not I will like a character. 
but only time will tell. So enough talk about the Centurion, now it's time to talk about the Shinobi. This was probably the most interesting character of the two now that I've seen the full character trailers. The trailer all but confirms my suspicion of the Shinobi being the new fastest character in the game as well as potentially the weakest attacking character. It also has some interesting looking attacks. By the trailer it looks as if the Shinobi has a backflip dodge instead of a normal retreating dash everyone else has. Or maybe the backflip is the same as a roll for the Shinobi. I'm not sure, though I would say it's more of a dash or dodge. It apparently also has a ranged guard break attack that I was guessing it would have in my previous video and therefore I think will be a pretty harsh punish if it is countered. Another thing to note is that based on the way the character attacked in the trailer, it did appear that the attacks didn't have much weight to them, leading me to believe even more that the Shinobi's base attacks will be overall weaker than most of the other characters. The devs last week said that the Shinobi was going to have a lot of attacks and a wide move set and that it was going to be more difficult to master. By the look of the trailer, it does appear as if there will be a few moves in there that are kind of difficult to pull off. I really think we will see the Shinobi have comparable light attack damage to the Peacekeeper's lights and maybe even heavies or an uncharged heavy from the Conqueror. Every character can execute any character with one full segment of their health remaining with a heavy attack. But some can execute with a segment and a half such as the Berserker, Orochi, Kensei, and a few others. But I don't think the Shinobi will be one of those characters. There is also an attack in the trailer where the Shinobi appears to teleport around the area for an attack. I'm not sure how this will affect the Shinobi's gameplay or even if it's, a legit, if it's an actual legitimate attack. I mean, it, I would imagine that it is because I doubt it would have been presented in that way if it wasn't. But I'm not sure why For Honor devs decided that this was an actual thing. I think it would give the Shinobi a pretty large advantage over many other characters depending on the requirements and characteristics of this teleportation attack. I would imagine that the teleportation could possibly take quite a bit of stamina in order to pull off. Otherwise, that attack could kind of be overused if, it's, if it doesn't take that much stamina. I think based on what I saw, however, that the Shinobi is the standout character out of the two characters. Don't get me wrong, I love what I saw of the Centurion, but the Centurion was largely what I expected. The Shinobi, despite knowing that it was a ranged and then CQC and then back to a ranged type of, def of character, I was expecting a lot, I wasn't expecting a lot of what I saw. Though I still stand on my thoughts that it will be the fastest character in the game, I doubt the Shinobi will have any bleed attacks because of that because of the ranged attacks and the overall speed. But in general, I am very encouraged by what I am seeing from both characters. So anyways, that will pretty much conclude the added hype of season two content. I hope you guys learned a little something today. If nothing else, you got to see some of my own thoughts regarding the new content if you hadn't watched my last video, or if you wanted some added context to my thoughts, you certainly got them here. So I can't wait until the next Warriors Den next week where we get to a little bit more in depth with the movesets of each of the new characters because that was confirmed. So make sure you tune in next week at the Warriors Den if you aren't really interested in it. I think you might be interested in this fall, this coming week's Warriors Den. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed another opinion of this content and I hope you guys enjoyed the video as a whole. If you, didn't, if you did, don't hesitate to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more For Honor content. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of the new characters and which character you think you will, more, you will gravitate towards more. Anyways, thanks once again for watching. Adios and peace. Until next time.